Phil Donahue went on CNN to discuss the election of Donald Trump. Uh, Donahue is, of course, the talk show legend who was fired from MSNBC because he was against the Iraq war. Let's see what he had to say. I think the press really missed or at least ignored an important story, and that is uh, as Trump walks out at the rallies, you know, people, you know, all those cell phones that are above the head, you know, that you see from the back. Yeah. Who are those people? The mayor of South Bend, Indiana, Pete Buttigieg, is the one who is saying his constituents are looking at all this and saying, what about me? I think the mainstream media has, it's Trump, 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 Trump. They haven't drilled down on why is he president? How did this happen? And I think they're going to discover that, uh, well, I think it's already revealed. These are angry people. These are, as we know now, white working class people, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan. These are the people who will make things. Or, and they don't, maybe they haven't had a, a raise in eight years. The rumor is that their company is being sold. Their kids can't pay back their college loans. They come back exhausted from their day at the factory and they read the paper where a guy in a hedge fund made a million dollars on Thursday. You, you can't do this to people. Mm -hmm. Sooner or later they're going to go kaboom. And they did and the kaboom expressed itself in the election of Donald Trump. Same circumstance for Brexit. Uh, David Leonhardt, a uh, new, uh, New York Times, yeah. A new uh, voice on the op-ed page, and I think a welcome one, had a fascinating piece just this week. He, is, he makes the point that the reason the people who elected Donald Trump president didn't vote. If, if You mean because so many people didn't vote? It's not right, on their hands. The, you're right. The, the, the victory for, uh, or at least the people who would cause him to lose would be the people who didn't vote who wouldn't have voted for him. It's, it's a little bit of a difficult thing to grasp, but I it made that mistake true. on air yesterday. I, I said on CNN, oh, well, 46% 46, 46 of the country voted for President Trump. Actually, no, about 19% of the country voted for President Trump, and then a little bit more for Clinton, and then a lot of people didn't vote. So let me just paraphrase what they're both saying there. Um, people angry at the establishment brought us Trump. So, the establishment brought us Trump. The other, so it's, there's two prongs here. That's the first one. The second one is people who were totally uninspired, who stayed home, brought us Trump. Now, the corporate Democrats look at that and they want to browbeat people and they want to shame people. And they want to go, how dare you? That's why we have, it's all your fault. <laughs> But no, again, the way of looking at that is, how broken is your party that people weren't inspired to go out to vote against Trump? Where they looked at Trump and Hillary and said, eh, they both suck. What? The guy had a 60% uh, unfavorability rating on the day he won. So what does that say about you? You could try to browbeat people and shame people as much as you want. That's not a strategy. That's not a strategy. So you're not going to win the next election. It doesn't matter how much you shame third-party voters or people who stayed home. So the onus is on you. Nobody owes you their fucking vote. Not a single person. So the point is, do you know how easy it would have been to beat this guy if the establishment was functioning? Like, if... If the system wasn't completely and utterly geared towards screwing over regular people, there's no way Trump would have won. He doesn't have a snowball's chance in hell if those are the conditions. But we happen to live in a country and live under a system that's totally unresponsive to the people. I mean, they, political scientists have studied this. And they found that the U.S. functions as an oligarchy. It doesn't function as a democracy. So popular opinion does not translate into policy. Wages have been stagnant since the 1980s. N people don't have health insurance. They don't have health care. They go bankrupt as a result of it. You know, we have a student loan debt crisis. So 
everybody feels like the system is rigged against them because it is. So when somebody comes along and his whole aura is like, Oh, let's break this fucking thing up with a hammer. I'm a crazy person. Vote for me. Well, if the establishment is failing you that much, people are going to go, some of them are going to go, yes, I'm going to vote for that guy. And others are going to go, well, it's that or the just the status quo in your face. Like, oh, I'll just continue business as usual. That's Hillary. And so that's why we got Trump. We got Trump because people are mad at the establishment. Now, understand that now that he's elected, he's the biggest establishment president ever. I mean, he's just doing everything the establishment wants. He's now the quintessential establishment Republican. He's Marco Rubio. He's Jeb Bush. He's Mitt Romney on steroids. He's doing everything they would have done. So the people didn't get this anti-establishment thing, but that's who they thought they were voting for. And that's the reason why a lot of people stayed home and didn't vote, because they thought, well, crazy person, but he's anti-establishment, and person who's pro-establishment, who I don't like. So, um, I think Phil Donahue's right. You can only, you can only spit in people's eye for so long before they spit back in your eye. Spit back in the establishment's eye. And that's what the election of Trump was. Now again, he's not actually anti-establishment. Uh, since he's been in there, he's been doing all the policies the establishment loves. But his election is more than just, oh my God, people are racist, people are sexist. There, there are literally millions, millions of voters who voted for Obama twice and then voted for Trump. So, so is your strategy to call them racist and sexist and then hope that they vote for you again? Or shame them and browbeat them? And then say, fall in line. That's not going to work. You need The Democrats need to have an anti-establishment message, a populist message. Then Democrats will start winning elections. That's what Justice Democrats are about. Candidates who are for Medicare for all. Candidates who are for free college, for a living wage, for ending the wars, for ending the drug war. If they run on an unapologetically populist platform, they will win. If they don't, they'll continue to lose.